Welcome back. Welcome back to Cactus Arcade's never-ending Let's Play of Halo Part... I don't even know what part we're at anymore. Uh, I think it's like eight or nine. No, I think we're, we're, we're past that. We're, we're definitely in the tens somewhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are here playing. Graham is playing. Yep. Uh, I, Casey, am watching like The Watcher. Yep. And... Oh, fuck. It's out of ammo. You're out of ammo. Your mom's the ammo. <laughs> Oh shit, he's in there, he's attacking you. So, um, Graham, do you think Bran is the Night King? Uh, I think I'm the Night King. Oh fuck. Um, yeah, we're talking, oh uh, fuck. We're talking uh, Game of Thrones, uh, currently hasn't uh, been out. Like, the season, like, just started. We're on the, uh... We're on episode two. We're yeah. in between episode two and three as of this recording. Yeah. Um, episode three looks to be the big battle of Winterfell, judging by the trailer. Unless they pull a fast one, and they're like, oh, surprise, not actually... It's actually just an hour of Cersei having sex with Euron. <laughs> oh, boy. No, it's actually, um, Beric Dondarrion having a rap battle with the Night King. Because <laughs> <laughs> Beric... Okay. Can we just talk for a second? Beric Dondarrion, the actor who plays him, has the best single voice of um, anything in the entire show. Podrick has the best voice. Did you hear him last episode singing? Okay, Jesus. but everyone sounds, almost everyone sounds better when they're singing. That's true. But Beric Dondarrion, Beric Dondarrion is Dondarrion just... Beric that smooth voice. Death is the enemy. The first one. And the last. It's like, oh, I want him to be king just for his voice alone. He looks a lot older than he's supposed to be. Well, he did come back from the dead like well, six yeah. times. In the, because he looks in the in the books, he's like twenty, in the first season. Yeah. When, well, in the first season, he was played by a different actor. Yeah, I know. And he oh. looked younger in the first season, and now he looks like middle. Someone aged. who's come back to life six times. Uh yeah, sure. So um. Fuck. Fuck. We're we're gonna make some incorrect predictions. Now. Yeah. Like we do, mm -hmm. so um, uh, so Graham, yeah, uh, who do you think is gonna win the battle? Um, Bram, he's gonna finally walk. He's gonna <laughs> oh god, no, <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> oh, if this fucking happens, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> oh my god, um, He'd be like I was faking it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All part of my plan. <laughs> Oh my god. What if, um... I don't know. I don't see... I mean, they, they set up the last episode with, like, it seems like anyone could die except for probably yeah. Daenerys and Jon. And I don't think Bran's gonna die. I don't know. Maybe Bran does I, something that, ki that, that stops the White Walkers yeah. but kills him. Um, Theon, I feel like, is gonna die. Because he chose to come. He's like, oh, I'll protect you in the grove. I'm like, eh, bye-bye. Die protecting Sansa. What if Sansa dies protecting Theon? No, well, maybe. What if, um... I don't know, I feel like that'd be a cheap... What if, um, Ramsay Bolton comes back as a zombie? I, then I get to fi watch Ramsay Bolton die again. I'm all for that. It's interesting that when pe people have... People, like, there, there's... Fuck. Uh, like, with undead things... Yeah. Um, one of the easiest tropes you can do with the, like one of the most obvious like dangling in front of your face things to do to explore that is having someone we know come back as a zombie and in game of thrones that has not happened uh at least in the TV in, the, in show. the show in the books catelyn comes back as lady stoneheart and for the show they decided fuck that um so that, that, that we have not seen that in the tv show we've not seen any zombies of people that we know which, little low key, a little disappointing. No, not true. We saw the Umber Boy in the first one. Oh yeah, that's true. That was creepy as fuck. Also, um, what's Benjen? I mean, he's not really a well, zombie. Yeah, yeah, but he remembers everything. That's different. He's I'll, still I'll be honest. Insane. When in like the first episode, when like those people from the uh, Night's Watch came back, like that that one person looked sort of like Benjen. Yeah. I was like, for a moment, I was like, is Benjen is Benjen back? 
Yeah, that's what I thought. There were some people who were like, Benjamin's not actually dead. And I'm like, okay, you guys are, you guys are stupid. Um, I, I say, and then Benjamin comes back next episode. Just yeah. watch. Uh, Christian, please. Yeah, Christian, please, please, please make the editing show how obviously wrong we are. Yeah, just put up a wrong counter uh, for every like little like, how many thing. little things that we get wrong. We'll yeah. help you if you need you, help. Yeah, we'll we'll help you if you need help. Um, so Gendry or Arya is definitely gonna yeah. die. You have sex, you're gonna die. That's how um, it works in which in fiction. I I kind of don't want Gendry to die because he's sort of like the oh like. Mm, the like sort of like the wild card that sure tech he has a claim to the throne technically. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens. It'd be what interesting happens. if Arya dies. If this is like the end of Arya's story, uh, I don't, I don't know because she's got like a whole list of people. What this this was something else I thought what, going into the final season. I think everyone on Arya's list is gonna die, but. She's not gonna want them to. Some of them, like I don't think she's she, she's not gonna want the hound to die. No, and she's not gonna want um, what Beric Dondarrion's also on her list to uh, die. Well, he, um, he she said he was. He was. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, that's the thing though. I still think any anyone that was on the list is gonna die. Most of them do die, but not end up not by her. Like um, Joffrey and Tywin die. Thoros of Mir dies. It, it's I, I like the idea that everyone on that list is actually marked for death, whether it's Arya or not. Um, yeah. It's, uh, also, how great was like the Hound's line talking to Barrack? Lord of Light's gonna wonder why he brought you back nineteen times only to die when I throw you off this baddest. <laughs> oh my god! I love the Hound. He's dead. Yeah. Probably. Um, no Clegane Bull for him. Don't get, don't get, what the, what the fuck, Richard? <laughs> what the fuck, Richard? He's doing well, finally, God. Um, I don't know, if, I don't know how I even feel about the Clegane Bull at this point, I mean, like, well, I, I the, want, the mountain's like an undead weirdo. Yeah, but, he did have that whole thing when they saw him, like, yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm coming for you. I feel like not having any payoff for that. Plus, someone's going to have to probably kill the mountain. Uh, and if it's not him, then what's the fucking point? Uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, Brienne or Jamie, one of them is doomed. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of on the camp that it's Jamie. I think I, it's in. I, yeah, it, it's. I don't know it's how tough I feel. predicting because. There are, like, so many, like, oh, I want to see, like, these storylines filled. But at the same time, the tragedy of never seeing those storylines fulfilled. And so I'm torn between whether or not I want to see uh, Jamie kill Cersei, or if I want to see Arya kill Cersei wearing Jamie's face. I don't know which is better, which is preferable. I, can't, I like the idea, the twist on, like, Cersei thought her little brother was gonna kill her, and the little brother turns out to actually be Jamie. And obviously, that yeah. that that song, that Hands of Gold song, heavily foreshadows that that Jamie is gonna kill her. I mean, it's about it's a in the books that song is supposed to be about Tyrion and Shay, but it sounds an awful lot like it could be about Jamie, especially after Jamie's lost his hand and now has like yeah. the golden hand. But we'll see. I don't know. Uh, so let's talk about Avengers. Yeah, the two, the two things that will be out for months by the time we, we talk. We, we, let's let's make wrong predictions for Avengers. Let's add a wrong prediction for Avenger count on the top. Here's what I predict. I predict that Avengers and Game of Thrones will converge into the uber mega fiction, and we'll all spontaneously shit Ant-Man out of our anuses. Thanos. I think Thanos is going to be revealed to be a dad. Thanos is a dad? He's already got a dad bod. Look at him. He's dummy thick. Uh, but I, I am happy in the trailers that he doesn't seem to be doing like his like whole like 
wearing like a tank top deal from uh, Infinity War. Well, he doesn't need to wear. He needs to wear. He doesn't need to wear any armor in Infinity yeah, War. Yeah, but he still doesn't look as cool as he could. Well, no, he doesn't. What if he was just naked? He was just like, you know what? I got the Infinity Gauntlet. Balls to the wind. <laughs> Fuck it. And it's like this massive display of power. His his dick is like the size of Tony's arm, and he just like slaps him in the face with it. <laughs> he uses the Infinity Gauntlet to make his dick bigger and slap Tony in the face with it. What if instead of going up his butt, Thanos goes up his or er, uh, Ant Man goes up his urethra? Why is that not the theory? Going up his urethra is ten times funnier. What is it, Graham? I don't want to join this conversation. <laughs> Balls. Okay. Balls. This this is this is something that a little bugs me. So in have you ever read the Infinity Gauntlet comic? I know, but I know of it. So in the comic, one of the things that's noted, so 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 obviously it's it's different because in the comics it starts with Thanos having all the Infinity Stones, and then everything happens, and obviously Infinity War ends with that. Yeah. But um, when one of the things that happens is you know a bunch of the Avengers plus you know some other Marvel characters that were part of the Avengers lineup at that time go and fight Thanos, and so um, the Thanos's brother Eros who isn't in the movie, uh, is watching all this happen, and he's sort of, like, narrating it um, as it's happening. Like, it's his internal monologue that we're, like, seeing on the pages. And so Thanos, to, like, do a show of power, separates himself from the the stones, mostly, and he only uses the power stone. Yeah. And that way he doesn't... Because if he wasn't using the power stone with the way it works in the comics, he would know exactly what they're going to do before they did it. So he takes that away so that it's more of a fair fight, even though it's still really not a fair fight. No. But the person that comes closest to killing Thanos is Wolverine. And the narration notes that he's one of the least powerful there. He's basically just got knives coming yeah. out of his hands. And the movie, they don't do anything like that. Like, the most powerful characters are the ones that end up getting closest to killing Thanos. And I feel like I don't know. I, I yeah. like it better with it being like the underdog. Like I, I know. I, th- I feel like I, I talked about about this before. There's just like such a missed opportunity for it to be like a real underdog story. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I really like Captain Marvel, but I don't know how I feel about Captain Marvel just basically coming in almost being like a Deus Ex Machina. Uh, again, I don't even know. Maybe she just gets her ass handed to her by Thanos. Like first thing in the movie, I could be entirely wrong. Um, but we'll see. We'll we'll see. I I, I feel like um, I don't know. I feel like Captain Marvel doesn't. I don't know. I wish like they had introduced her sooner. Yeah. Than this, it feels like weird introducing her between two parts. But she's in the past, and then she shows up, and yeah. Um, apparently. Joss Whedon originally wanted to introduce Captain Marvel and Spider-Man in Age of Ultron, but they couldn't. I don't know why they couldn't do Captain Marvel, but obviously the reason they couldn't do Spider-Man was because they were having issues with the negotiation or something. Yeah. But I don't know why they couldn't include Captain Marvel. That feels like it would have been a good time to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like... The, the, the weirdest thing about like the current... Um, like between Age of Ultron and um, Infinity War, is there? There are just as many movies from Iron Man to Age of Ultron as there are from Age of Ultron to Infinity War. Yeah, and that, that's a little weird to me. Like it feels like a lot suddenly got got added in such a little amount of time. And also, I, I we might have said this before that. No characters get introduced between um, Avengers and Age of Ultron that become Avengers in Age of Ultron. It's just the Guardians, yeah. and that's really weird. Uh, like Iron Man, like not Iron Man, Spider Man was supposed to be an Avenger, and like I, I like I like how they keep, they're keeping him somewhat like small scale, but like at the same time, I really really want him to just be like an Avenger because Spider Man's like 
my favorite Marvel character. You know, they almost... There's so many weird, like, they almost totally fucked themselves with this. You know they almost made Tobey Maguire Spider-Man the jumping off point for the MCU, sort of? Mm, Spider-Man 3 was originally going to have a cameo by Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I, I have not heard of that. And that's... The, 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 the craziest thing about that, to me, is that this... With these cameos that ended up not going out of place, there's, like, theoretically an alternate universe where they can just pull the X-Men and everyone into the MCU. Yeah. Because they almost had Wolverine have a cameo in the first Spider-Man. And they almost had Robert Downey Jr. have a cameo in Spider-Man 3, so there must be a universe yeah. where that happened. Yeah, that would be that'd be interesting. Just because... Like, I'm really sad that Hugh Jackman... Like, they, they couldn't get, like, the X-Men in the MCU before Hugh Jackman had to step away um like i who knows he could theoretically change his mind and come back but i highly highly doubt that um i th- i like the way his character ends i yes. feel like it's it's a good ending yeah it's a, it's a good ending i wonder if um infinity or endgame will have any good endings okay have i also said that i hate endgame as a title i think it's yes yeah, it, 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 it's i feel like they were tr- like, remember that whole, like, oh, we're not going to reveal the title of the fifth movie, it's going to be a spoiler. Was it? That I, was, like, the number one, like, people were, like, guessing, like, oh, this is what it's going to be called. But it's such a lame name, like, Endgame. It's, I don't know, it sounds weird. Like, it sounds... What would you... What would I have called it? Uh, well, I mean... I, I I mean I haven't seen it so that's a little unfair but I've heard I've heard suggestions I've heard some people saying like um, one of the ones I heard way back when because initially it was remember when it's Infinity War parts one and two yeah. and then they announced it wasn't going to be Infinity War part one and two and people yeah. were like oh what should they call it now someone I heard someone suggest that the first part should be Infinity Gauntlet and the second part should be Infinity War but I've I've also heard the opposite that Infinity War works for the first part but the second one should be called Infinity Gauntlet because Presumably, they're gonna make their own gauntlet or something in this True. one. And both, both, I see both. Um, I don't know. I feel like it could also they could have used names from the comic like um, Infinity Crusade is one of them. Yeah. But that's also a lame one. That's also a, yeah. I don't know. I feel like um, this is another thing I found very bizarre. Um, have you noticed that? How long have we been going, by the way? I don't know. I thought you said the timer. I forgot. We started at, like, what, like, 1... 1.45? Yeah. It's 2.04. Okay. So we'll wrap this up soon. But have, have you noticed that... So, they don't call, in the marketing, really, the Star Wars episodes. They don't call them by their episode number. And they yeah. call them by their name. And when, when the MCU started, like, when Disney... Like, because obviously Disney bought Marvel in 2009. But the first Marvel movie in the MCU they distributed was The Avengers. And so by the time they really got their hands into the production, it was on, like, Thor The Dark World and yeah. Winter Soldier. And that was when they stopped numbering sequels. True. Yeah. I, I find that very interesting. Because really only, like... I, it was really only Iron Man 1, 2, and 3. Iron Man 1, 2, and 3 are the only ones that get a number. Guardians sort of gets a number, but it's also like... It's a number and a subtitle yeah. at the same time. Which works for what for, yeah, for the movie. Yeah, it absolutely works for that. Um, so I wonder if Disney has some sort of like marketing thing where they're like... Numbered sequels aren't best for marketing purposes. Yeah, because it's it sort of like... Might be like... Oh, I haven't. I didn't see Iron Man once. Why should I say Iron Man two? Yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, the Thor: The Dark World one, sure. Yeah, that's. And then and then people were like, "What the fuck? Why did I watch Thor: The Dark World?" <laughs> <laughs> because that's when they stopped having numbered sequels, and I'm wondering if maybe it should have just been Avengers one, two, three, and four, but. Uh, that does, that yeah, is like eight, like the Age of Ultron. The Age order. of Ultron. I just don't know what else. I mean, I feel like it's. I uh, know Avengers, Avengers, Avengers Game of Thrones. That's what it should be called. God. Avengers: The Rise of Skywalker. Um, what would you call it? Maybe just Avengers Ultron. Like, it just has a more sinister. Avengers feel. Ultron. Yeah, but again, what like, would you call in 
the, the one that's about to come out. Uh, Endgame. What would Endgame. you call Endgame? I, I, I kind of liked Avengers Disassembled, but it's a bit wordy. Yeah. Uh, maybe just... It's, it's cheesy, but like Avengers United. Avengers United, yeah. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes is actually yeah. not a bad one either. I mean... That was and that was a good show. Yeah, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It, it had a unique. It was one of the few Marvel shows that, like have a really unique style. Mm-hmm. Like the current like Marvel shows are, eh. Like I saw some clips from them and it's just. We have to talk about this next episode. Yeah. Um, the teaser for the next episode. We are going to talk about Phineas and Ferb Marvel crossovers. And uh! <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh! You're not gonna want to miss it. Graham, do you like Phineas and Ferb? Absolutely. Okay, good. So I haven't seen the, I haven't seen it. You you no, haven't I seen have the, the Marvel seen crossover? They they came out like around the time I stopped watching Phineas and Ferb. My God. Okay, we're gonna do a let's play of the Phineas and Ferb Marvel crossover. <laughs> Oh, oh God! All right. See you next time, ladies Bye. and gents. Bye. Bye.